five, three for Selium. Seven in a row for Selium. What's like one weird habit? I'm not joking. He just eats chicken tenders like <laughs> all day, every day. Every meal? Like, every <laughs> meal. I'm not even joking. You eat some tendies and you start dropping 40 bombs and scrims. You're spawning oh. your short second and Selium. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? My name is Tyler Polchow, aka Teep, and welcome back to The Barracks, brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile, the number one brand in prepaid. Today, we're going one-on-one -on -one with Selium from the Atlanta phase, one of the most dynamic and flexible players that we have in the Call of Duty League. His name sits atop potential MVP candidate lists, and he's been dominating throughout the year thus far. Sel, thank you so much for joining me on the episode today, buddy. How are we feeling? Uh, pretty good, man. It's, it's pretty cool to be here in the barracks. Hell yeah. Have, have you seen any of the other episodes? Yeah, for sure. I've seen like like most of them. All right. Starting off today, we have the Game Changers. I want to pick your brain a little bit about recent events in the Call of Duty League with your team, uh, with your career so far, and sort of how you got involved with professional Call of Duty. So to start off, uh, FaZe, your team, has had a very strong run throughout the league thus far. Uh, you have the number one seed locked in going into champs. It's got to be a great feeling. The last home series, though, a little bit of an upset loss in the final to Toronto. How are you feeling after that uh, in specific? And where's the team's head at uh, now that you've locked in the number one seed for champs? Um, our team has been talented right now. It's to the roof. You know, I, I think our team should have won that tournament. Yeah. But I think we just made a few mistakes that caused us at the end. But I think like our team is really confident going into champs right now. So that's how our, our team stands right now. Uh, that's great to hear. Uh, you guys have been very, very consistent throughout the year, uh, making it to a lot of finals, really clutching up at a lot of game fives as well. Do you think all those reps throughout the season thus far have prepared you guys well for champs? You've get, been getting a lot of like uh, tense situations where you guys have to to clutch up as a squad. Do you think it's sort of helped you having all these close series? Yeah, for sure, because our team figures out what maps like we're good at, what, like what maps we're not good at versus other teams. So I think it uh, for sure helped us like even throughout like the losses and stuff. I think it for sure helps us at the end. Yeah, it's got to, right? Just more reps, the better. Yeah. With your team, uh, I feel like some of the other players on your lineup might be, I don't know if I want to say take the the spotlight in a sense, but you've been so damn consistent on this roster so far. You've been a player that's just so crucial in sort of like a, a flex type role. You're able to run whatever weapon you want at an extremely high level and also being an extreme factor in S&D. How do you feel about your individual performance so far on this team throughout Modern Warfare? Do you feel like you've been better as an SMG, as an AR? Where's your comfort level at, and how do you feel like you've been playing on an individual level? Um, for me, T, I honestly feel like I've been like playing better as an AR. Like every time I pull on AR, I just feel like I'm one of the the best like with AR. But okay, I mean, I've been doing I've been doing my job as a sub. You know, I've been just filling them the gaps the team needs. Um, been doing my thing. You know, but I feel like the last event I uh, underperformed a bit for sure. Like for my standards, and yeah. I, uh, I get champs. I'll be uh, like back at full form, in my opinion. So we've seen sort of the the meta change going down, and we've been seeing more M4s. Uh, obviously, the gentlemen's agreements made things a little bit wonky for a while there. So you feel like you, your comfort level is with an AR. Do you think this shift into uh, you know we're not seeing that different that much different of a meta recently? But do you think teams pulling out extra ARs gives you even more confidence to to keep one out in more situations? Yeah, for sure. Because uh, like for me, I'm like at the third AR right now. So yeah. like, like every time I get to every time I get to run the AR, I'm just like happy, you know, just get to run one. But right now, um, our team is looking pretty good, so I'm I'm excited with this new meta. Love to hear that, dude. Your team's very young. Uh, how do you think? Uh, I feel like our community uh, praises like the vets, uh, the 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 old school leaders. Do you think that's necessary in what we're seeing in Call of Duty today? Do you think your guys is, uh, you know, you, you guys are all like younger players. Do you think this impacts your team at all for better, for worse, your comms, anything like that, like past experience? Or do you feel like it doesn't really matter at this point and you feel like you guys are, you know, just as confident as ever? Yeah, I honestly feel like it doesn't really matter for us because I feel like all five of us can like, can just at one point just go off or like just call whatever, you know, like the shots. But I feel like Crowder and RJ as a coach, like help us a lot in game just not go crazy during the matches, you know, right. like just calm down and stuff. So I feel like they help us a lot. And yeah, that kind of tied into my next question too. Uh, your coaching staff is definitely praised to be one of the best that we have in the league so far. I guess what's the biggest thing, if you had to note one, that they've helped you guys either improve upon or be more consistent in? Is it a specific mode? Is it, you know, what what's the number one thing, would you say? 
Um, honestly, I feel like the number one thing that they've helped us on, and that like for me personally, is um, communication. I feel like like back then, the start of the year, I used to like just call out everything I saw. Yeah. But now I'm just like I'm calm down. You know, I just call out like one thing and just stop. Like I feel like th- like they've helped us a lot with that. Yeah, that's funny. It's funny you say that. I've I've talked with Crowder a little bit about your guys' team, and he said. It's like you guys have your own language uh, at certain times in the game where you <laughs> yeah. guys just are so cracked with the call outs. You guys are going insane. But I mean, if it works, it works. It's been you know working really well for you guys so far. Yeah. MVP talk a little bit. I know your mind's probably not on that at this point. You're focused on winning winning champs and making sure your team performs as best as possible. But if you, if you had to pick one or two people uh, that you think is your biggest competition for for locking down the MVP prize, uh, who would you pick? Um, it would have to be Simp or Shati. Okay. Um, I think Simp and Shati have been like lights out this year. I feel like Simp's been really consistent, and uh, Shati like this first year, so like he's been showing out for his team and like just how, his, how he's been playing and stuff. It's like lights out. Yeah, all you guys in the sort of candidate race for that have been you know pulling more than your own weight, super consistent throughout. But yeah, you're totally right. Seeing someone like Shati perform so well in his first year, it's like what is his true potential here? Right? It's yeah. uh, it's actually crazy to see. Moving on forward now, what's the grind like? I, I know you guys are closing in to champs, the biggest tournament. You guys have been obviously grinding for all these other home series too. Uh, what's your daily grinding schedule look like? What's your practice schedule like recently? And if you had to pick one person on your team that puts in the most hours on Call of Duty, uh, who is it? Um, right now, it has to be Priesta. He's been playing the most out of all of us. But for my champs schedule, like um, just my daily routine right now, it's Grim. Eat, play tens, go to sleep. Pretty much, <laughs> that's all I do. That's all, that's all I'm pretty much gonna do uh, for the next like Call couple of Duty weeks, on so. your mind, dude. Yeah. How many hours a day you playing? You think? Um, probably like around ten or eight. Damn. Sure. That's a, yeah. Hey, long schedules, man. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. In 2018, you became one of those names that was thrown into the conversation that people had their eyes on. So. When you finally got your first chance to be on a pro team, you signed a pro contract, you got you know onto a pro team to compete. Can you walk me through what that feeling was like, what that process was like for you? Where was your head at when you finally got a chance to make your name a little bit more known? Yeah, um, I mean it was it was like amazing because like I joined Face Clan. And I never thought my first team ever would be Face Clan. You know, it's like such a big good place to start, dude. Yes, yeah, like such a big organization. It's just like starting like from Face Clan. It's just like it was crazy. The feeling was unreal. So I'm, I'm like so grateful that Face Clan gave me the chance. Like Crowder and uh, Zuma, Priesta and Attach, like they all gave me a chance. So I'm just like really grateful for that. What your transition over to a professional team when it came to like practicing and, and things like that? What was the biggest difference when you got got the chance to join the Phase? Uh, do you feel like you got a lot better, a lot faster, or? You know, what was the, just purely speaking, gameplay-wise, do you feel like you improved at a rapid pace once you got that opportunity? Yeah, for sure, because before I uh, played professionally, I just played S&D tournaments, and right. playing at the highest level versus, like, other professionals that could, like, had the highest skill, you know? It would just, like, it, had, like, it helped me a lot, and it made me a lot, like, better as a player and stuff, so I feel like it helped me for sure. That's awesome. And how has FaZe as an organization been towards you? Obviously, you know, with the... The, the franchising, things like that. It's been s- probably a switch for you. But in terms of phase as a whole, uh, how, have they, how have they treated you so far? Oh, they've been the best to me, man. Like they have a, uh, every time I ask for something, they always respond. They get, get to me like right away. So, so yeah, for sure. Like they've been the best. Very cool. Glad to hear that, man. Well, it's been awesome to see you sort of uh, flourish into one of the best players in the game so quickly too. You obviously have a crazy amount of talent and the fact that you're able to, to play a sort of flex role at such a high level is very, very impressive. And it's been uh, amazing to see you develop as a pro player, man. You've been killing it and I hope you keep on killing it for years to come. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Okay. Done with the game changers. What we're going to do now, uh, you said you've watched the other episodes. So we're moving on to the hip fire segment. Yeah. You're going to be competing against some of the other people that we've had on the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a 90 second timer up. I'm going to fire through some questions for you. And your job is to try and answer them as fastly and as correctly as possible. We're going to keep count of all your correct answers and see where you stack up against some of the other people that we've had on the show. All Does right. that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> okay. 90 seconds. You ready? Yep. All right. Three, two, one. Who has the most kills on phase? Simp. Who has the least amount of deaths on phase? Simp. Who has a higher KD, you or Simp? Simp. 
Who on FaZe has the most headshots? Major Maniac. Name a single player on Optic Gaming LA. Dashy. Which team has a higher overall KD, Huntsman or Mutineers? Um, Huntsman. What year did the first Call of Duty game release? 2003. Which team is Pander on? The Auto Surge. Which COD game had Dome multiplayer map? MW3. Which COD game had Octane multiplayer map? Ghost. Which COD game had Estate? A skip, I don't know. Which COD game had Summit? A B01. Which COD game had Crash? Uh, COD 4. Saint is the head coach for which team? A rocker. Which player has won the most COD tournaments? Crim6. Who is the oldest player in the league? Uh, Clayster. Which game developer created first COD? Um, Infinity Ward. How many COD games are there total? 16. Boom. Locked it in. <laughs> well done. Well done. I'm actually surprised you didn't get the estate one. You see, it looks like you got the other map ones correct, too. Yeah, I, All I right, let, let, <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. All right, let's tally up your answers real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, 14. No. It's so close. Almost beat him. So, <laughs> yeah, silly, silly is at the number one spot with 15, but that's going to slot you in for tied to second place with attached, dude. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Uh, let's see. The ones that you actually, the headshots one is a difficult one. A BZ is actually oh, really? uh, wow. the one with the most headshots. And then least amount of deaths is major. Yeah, I was I was thinking that after I said that. I should have yeah. went yeah, back on it. Yeah, for sure. And then Mutineers actually has a higher KD than the Huntsman. Oh. I actually would have picked the Huntsman yeah. in that one too. That's actually crazy. So yeah, kind of tough ones that you miss, but overall, good job. Second place, man. That's oh, not damn. bad at all. I, I was trying to get first. <laughs> I know, right? Dude, so close. But hey, still podium finish. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, well done on the hip fire section. Uh, you got you absolutely. If it makes you feel any better, Clay, Mox, Envoy, Krim, Simp, Waskin, you smoked all of them. <laughs> if that makes you feel any better. Consolation yeah. prize. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Next segment coming up is called Staying Connected. Selium, we got a surprise guest in the line for you, buddy. Can you guess who it is? Who is it? It's your girlfriend, Jen. <laughs> Hello, Jen. Surprise. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> so, I need more out of you next yeah. time, bud. Sure. <laughs> Worked on the acting skills a little bit, dude. Uh, Jen, how's it going? Thank you so much for joining us on the episode today. It's going really good. Thanks for having me. So, you got to be proud of your, your potential MVP candidate here. Uh, how did you feel upon hearing the news that he, he's uh, in the running for it? Do you think it's well-deserved? I think it for sure it was well-deserved. Um, honestly... Just comparing everything from the beginning and stuff, it's just crazy to me to see how far he's come. Um, I feel like in my heart, I always kind of, you know, called him my own, own MVP and stuff. Um, so it's just nice to see that other people are finally like recognizing the talent that I always knew that he had. But yeah, I love that. How long you guys have been been together now? Uh, so we've been together for about two years, um, but we've kind of known each other for like longer when we were like, long, when we were like younger and stuff. That's awesome. So you you've seen him sort of to rise the stardom a little bit here too. I'm sure it's been a crazy process for you. Uh, Cell, next question for you. How, how has Jen supported you throughout these past couple of months throughout the CDL and honestly, you're upcoming into the to the pro scene? Oh yeah, she's been the best to me. I feel like she's like always supported me throughout every event, like everything. She's seen what of like the time I put in and she's always like so supportive of it. She's never like, like done anything to like stop me from playing or like stuff like that. You know, she's been like the best, so. That's awesome. That's Love it. to hear that. Yeah, it's it's very important to have that that connection and have that support because I feel like I don't know. Feel free to if it's different in your situation, but I feel like you know when it comes to like your friends and maybe your family, sometimes they don't really get what goes into the day to day process of of sort of doing what you do and being a pro and all that you know kind of goes into that. So having someone that sort of understands on that on that deeper level is just very very important uh, from my experience and I'm sure yours too. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Um, I feel like for me, like like for my parents, um, like uh, like my parents allow me to play, like back when I was living with them, they like they, like they only play, but just uh, to not stay up too late, you know. Yeah. Right. I used to stay up like really late, like five a.m., like stuff like that, like six a.m. every night. He he but, still doesn't listen. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, like I feel like the people around me have been like so supportive of me. Like even Jen, she's been the best girlfriend to me. So like I'm like just really proud or happy about like people around me and stuff. So. 
Love to hear that, man. Uh, I yeah. like this one. This is my favorite staying connected <laughs> segment so far. Uh, this one goes out to both of you. If you had to give one piece of relationship advice to other esport players, uh, esport couples, if you want to call them that, what would be like the one thing you would say is like the most important? You want me to answer that one? Yeah, you can answer it. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say probably the biggest thing in our relationship is definitely communication. I think that goes for just any relationship in general. For sure. Not even just like within esports, but um, me and MC, we don't like live together or anything. Um, we're both originally from Houston and stuff. So when he made the move to Atlanta and everything, we thought it was going to be super hard. Yeah. Um, but as long as you are keeping up with your communication and everything um, and just having trust and all that good stuff, I mean... A good relationship is just built on those fundamentals, love and all that. So we have a lot of that. So <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No, you're you're totally right. We've been in I've been in situations too with with my wife where over the years where you gotta be gone for X amount of time or you have to go do this event, traveling, this and that. Obviously it's weird times right now, but the if you're able to to sort of be on the same page, communicate effectively, speaking from like the player's perspective perspective too, it's like if if the relationship is going good, then you're gonna be playing better. It's like you know, it's you can definitely attest to that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So like, <laughs> for sure. it, it's very important to make sure you know the communication and stuff is in in, in the right spot. So I'm definitely can understand where you're coming from there. I'm sure other people can too. Love to hear it. Comms are just super important in game and out of game, folks. Okay, <laughs> very <Yeah>. true. <laughs> good comms. Good comms. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, Jen. I need something good on this one. Okay. What's like what's like one weird or interesting habit that you want to share about cell? What's oh like my one gosh. weird what's you one can't weird ask thing? This. We were Come literally on. talking about this last <laughs> night too. I was like, oh my gosh, because like no matter what, I'm always like, I'm so scared to embarrass you like that's like my number one fear and we were talking about this last night and everything too okay. and i was just like we're gonna be in this interview together and i'm gonna try so hard to like watch what i say and stuff because i just feel like he doesn't show it that much but like deep down i feel like he's just like oh my god here we go again yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um give me something an, an interesting or weird thing that he does like a little habit or something um let me think i think <laughs> I think it's kind of weird how he literally never branches out of like any other food groups. All he literally eats okay. is like, I'm not joking. He just eats chicken tenders like <laughs> all day, every day. And so like whenever I come to visit <laughs> him in Atlanta okay. and stuff, I like love seeing him, obviously, you know, good quality yeah. time. But it's like, I also have to mentally prepare myself to know that I'm going to be eating chicken tenders, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner for seven every days Every meal? Straight. Like every meal. <laughs> I'm not on, even man. joking. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Is that just like a like a comfort zone for you, or how, how, why so many tendies, bro? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I just like I've tried other foods, and that's the, I don't know. Like tenders are just the best. They just I mean, hit like, different. Yeah. yeah, like for me, I love tenders and pasta. I know what it so. is. What? You eat some tendies and you start dropping bombs. You start dropping forty bombs and scrims. You gotta stick <laughs> yeah, to it, right? Him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, if it works, it's working for you. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. After champs, you branch out the food groups a little bit, Please. my man. Yeah. For, <laughs> yeah, for Jen's try. sake at this point, you know? Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys play COD together at all? Well, we used to a lot. I mean, now that he obviously has kind of gained a lot more, you know, of a following and definitely has to put in more time than what yeah. he used to before. Um, back in the day, we used to play together a lot, like especially Black Ops 3 would play wagers okay. and stuff. Um, oh, I you play actually, wagers? Yeah, no, we were serious oh, that's about cool. it too. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very um, cool. Yeah, we actually met through the COD community and stuff because I used to stream um, COD a lot and we kind of had like the same friend group and everything. Um, and then we just kind of bonded a lot over COD and um, talking and stuff and playing together. But nowadays we don't really pay, play too much. He plays a lot of Warzone, I feel like, and yeah. I'm not good at Warzone. So <laughs> he takes it very seriously. So I just don't want to like interview with that. But right, I like yeah. to watch him play for sure. Like, hey, well, as stuff. long as you guys can, re can relate on it somehow, right? That's the most yeah, important thing. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Very cool. Now, I like this one. This is the most wholesome one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jen, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Sel, thanks for sharing this experience. And yeah, man, it's having like a strong, a strong backbone, a strong support system while you're being a pro player is one of the most important things, you know, like mentally speaking. It was like super big for me and I'm sure it is for you, too. So to hear you guys' relationship and the fact that you can you understand each other. You understand the grind that is necessary to to be in sort of the top spot to do this. It's it's awesome to hear you guys uh, sort of have each other's back. And uh, thank you guys so much for for sharing this with us. 
Yeah, for sure, yeah, man. Of course. Next up, so we're going to do some bot review. Because I want to pick your brain. You're one of the most highest performing players in the CDL. So we're going to bring up a round 11 from the Toronto Home Series in a basically unexpected upset for you guys. Okay, let's play this in 3, 2, 1. So in round 11, this situation in particular, uh, walk me through what you guys are talking about. Uh, what's your guys' game plan going into it? You guys have been in this situation a lot throughout the year. Tell me where your head's at. Yeah, so our team was just trying to like just like play off of them. Um, I think someone got a first blood. I'm not sure who it was, but um, right here, our team was just trying to like play the A side normally how we do two A, and then I watch tracks, and then uh, Zimp and Preston um, watch B side. But I think right here we kill one. If I'm correct. Let me see. Yeah, we kill one, and then right here, I think I'm pretty sure I trolled. Like I was getting a snipe from Cami, and like I was, mm -hmm. I, I just like wide peep to uh too far and I, I i got killed by method right there and then it's a 4v4 but yeah i, I kind of trolled right there for sure yeah you would have played it different in hindsight yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's tough dude yeah. crazy situation uh the fact that toronto was performing so well throughout this tournament was actually pretty crazy to see uh cami just absolutely dominating with a sniper when someone is is popping off like he was and, and playing so confidently how, how do you sort of react as a player when a sniper is just, you know, dropping, you know, double digits? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, our team was just trying to limit Cammy just to stop what he was doing. Our team was just trying to not peek him and stuff. But um, I feel like I feel like we did that, like, well, game five. Yeah. But I just, I, I kind of over peaked too, too much. And then right yeah, here, exactly. it's just, uh, it was kind of weird because Simp was pushed that bar. And he almost killed the Kleenex right here, but he couldn't he couldn't kill him and then Method traded him out. And uh it was kind of a difficult situation for Method or uh, like Mike and Preston to clutch this up, so I can't really blame him. And now they've gotta make the retake happen. Three versus three. Kleenex is able to get away with his life. Methods with his second kill of the round. It's down to Major Maniac and Priesta to come up with the clutch. Major Maniac's tagged up. Priesta makes it a two versus two. Can they find Priest the opening? Got three on the round. Priest has got three on the round. What else can he find? 25 seconds, seven and a half seconds to defuse. Here goes Major Maniac. It's Kleenex to deal with. He finds the opening. It's 1v1. It's 1v1 and Methods clutches again. So losing like that in a round 11, they end up clutching up to take the dub. How, how are the vibes after that moment? Do you guys feel like you could have done a lot of things better in the final? Uh, do you think, it, you know, your team handled it well? Where was your head at when, after this loss? Um, I mean, personally, I, I was I was devastated because like, I feel like I kind of costed that 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Finds the pick on the cell in the middle of the street. I, I was like kind of like sad, but I mean, our team our team was still like proud of like what we could have done like um with like the previous matches. I feel like we choked that last match, but I feel like our team, uh, like mindset was still good going to champs and stuff. So our whole team was like pretty like happy about the tournament performance we did. Honestly, you lock down the number one seed. You're in a very, very great position going into the bracket as well. Um, you guys have obviously been the, uh, you know, the top performer throughout the league so far. Uh, if you had, you know, based on how the the season has gone for you guys, are you happy with how you guys have performed? Do you think you guys have could have taken home more home series? Um, I don't know. I feel like you guys have went through. You guys would always do well enough to make it to like a final or make it through to the semifinals at the very least. So it's it's tough to like knock you guys too much for that. But I feel like you guys looked a little bit in hard points sometimes, especially just kind of all over the place. Um, what would you say was your biggest weakness throughout the regular season? Um, I feel like our biggest weakness throughout the regular season was for sure um, hard point like the rotations we did because sometimes we, like our, our team would be in like good positions but we just like over child too much and that would cost us like a hill or something but I feel like that would be our, our biggest weakness like, like hard point as we're rotating and stuff like just not like staying still you know especially when you guys your early dominance probably gave you guys a lot of confidence too so sometimes it's tough to, to reel it back in a little bit yeah. teams seem to have been in, um, improving as the year went on so yeah that actually makes a lot of sense all right, we got another link that we need to see. Let's bring up the, the MVP chant. I, I, I want to ask you questions, but I can barely hear the MVP chant. Look at you. <laughs> MVP <laughs> chant's going down, yeah, dude. That was crazy. <laughs> so that's got to be like a pretty new experience for you. H yeah. How'd that make you feel? How, what's that feeling like when you're standing up on the stage 
uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't real. Like, like, like that was the first tournament that a crowd's ever been, like done that for me. You know, so like last yeah. year I've played against like those kind of like chants, like Dashy, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. But having the, like the crowd like with you, like saying your names or MVP, like it was an unreal feeling. Like I couldn't believe it. Give you some chills a little bit. Yeah, for sure. When the crowd's on your side, it just like gives you this this awesome adrenaline, and I feel like it makes you play any better. Do you like when the when the crowds get behind you like that, just like purely game like game side? Yeah, like like during the game, I, I get I get so much confidence when the crowd's like screaming MVP. Or like, you're challenging, bro. Yeah, every time. Absolutely, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, you're you're still fairly new to the scene, and the fact that people are seeing you in that light as sort of like MVP candidate, uh, it was much earlier on in the season. You've been able to keep up, the, you know, the, the the stellar gameplay too. When it comes to like the future, do you even even think like that? Like you're trying to obviously you're trying to remain like a top player for as long as possible. But do you are you like almost playing for them? I'm kind of playing for like the the team and the people behind like the scene. You know, I, I feel like yeah, people like behind my uh, organization, like the, the people running it. So like I want to do it for them, you know, and and for the like future and just have it like like history. You know, I just want it to like be a. Uh, like that just in history trying to cement a legacy i i totally understand it dude that's awesome it it's i man, seeing that clip man it's got me in my feels a little <laughs> bit i feel like the tournaments earlier on yeah. with uh I, I wanted to see how the crowds are going to show up in each location a little bit unfortunate to, to see how things have played out but the online league has been going really well uh, i'm sure you missed the crowd behind you though yeah for sure i did moving on top three segment so what i need from you is three Call of Duty players who inspired you to become a pro. If you had to pick three people that you watched throughout the years when you're when you were younger, uh, I don't know, playing playing against in S and D tournaments, whatever it may be, who are the three people that you looked at and it's like, yep, I want to be like that guy. Um, for sure, like Scump, he's number one yep. for sure. Um, number two is Dashy because like before I would uh, I went pro, Dashy went pro before me. Okay. Or sorry, I don't know if I worded that wrong, but Dash went pro before me, and then um, just seeing how like he like got the spotlight was like crazy and stuff. Like seeing him play on the main stage was like really cool to me. So that's awesome. Dashy, and for number three, you're probably gonna have to be like like probably like formal, someone like him. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I, I like the Dashy pick a lot because he, he it probably gave you confidence in specific. Where I know you guys would game pretty regularly, right? Yeah. You guys are friends. So the fact that you saw somebody that you game with regularly not only get a chance to be a pro, but dominate in the fashion that he was able to do too, uh, did, did that give you even more confidence? Yeah, for sure. Because I used to play with him every day. I, I like, I, yeah. I, that was like my like my best friend at the time. So seeing him like go on the main stage and do what he was able to do was like like really uh, cool to me. Well, look at you, man. You you you're doing it too. Uh, if I'm, I'm trying to think, like who 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 would I answer? Like going back, this is uh, way too long ago. I don't even know how old you were when I was thinking about starting to, you know, compete and things like yeah. that. For, for my uh, my inspiration was probably like Rambo way back when. Rambo, Big T. I'd see those guys like streaming way back in the day. Yeah, it's like funny funny to think back. But moving on forward, now we have Teeps takes. So we have a couple different things I want your opinion on. I'm gonna give you my hot takes on Call of Duty League teams, players, and recent events throughout the league. Uh, let me know how you feel about it. Agree or disagree. Uh, those of you that are watching the episode as well, make sure you leave uh, your opinions in the comments as well on these different things that we're going to talk about. So first off, we have the playoffs bracket. All the seeds got locked in after the last home series that we've seen there. Uh, you can see where each of the teams sort of sit. Winners round one, two, and three, and then the elimination round there. Your top seeds, your bottom seeds. I'll give you my opinion first. I feel like this is a pretty good representation of of how good these teams have been throughout the year. Uh, we've seen sort of random glimpses of greatness from a couple of these teams. Toronto obviously clutching up in the in the last Toronto home series too to secure uh, a better seed as well. Do you feel like all the seeds that we see in the bracket leading into champs, do you feel like each team sort of deserves the spot that they got? Or do you feel like certain teams have overperformed or underperformed or maybe got bailed out because of like early performances and gotten worse over time? Uh, is there any teams that you feel like should be in a different spot? Yeah, um, I honestly feel like every team like that's uh, top eight or like top, uh, we like the winner's bracket, I feel like they deserve the spot mm -hmm. for sure. 
Are there any teams in specific that that you guys are worried about that have sort of given you a rough time? Obviously, you guys are preparing for for every sort of outcome, but you can see how the bracket's likely to play out there. Maybe you'll see in Huntsman, maybe you'll see a New York. Um, is there any team in specific throughout the tournament that sort of gives you guys a hard time in scrims? Um, I mean, there's a lot of teams that there's like a lot of top teams that give us a hard time. Um, like the Huntsman, the like Dallas Empire and the, the Mutineers for sure, I think is like all gotcha. teams to look out for and uh, champs. You have this sort of, you have a couple round buy. Do you like that? Do you like how this champs is sort of seated? Obviously you get a big reward. You're guaranteed X amount of money for, for getting over to the winner's round three based on your number one seed. But do you, it's going to be kind of weird for you waiting these couple of days. At least you guys can can hang out and probably scrim against some of the other top teams while these other matches play out. But would you rather play earlier on with some of these other guys or are you happy with the situation you're in? Uh, I mean, it's kind of weird. Like I would like to play like and, like during yeah. the matches while they're going on, but it's going to be weird for sure. Like having to sit out for a few days. Um, but I mean, I'm happy with that. We're like top six automatically. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, absolutely. You got to be at that point. Um, based on experience though, so you guys are going to be, obviously you're going to be scrimming on the days leading up to your match. Do you feel like it's going to be tough playing against a team that's going to be coming off of a win to face you guys in winners round three? Or do you feel like it doesn't really matter that much? Um, I mean, I honestly feel like it'll give us an advantage to see how they play their matches, like their maps and stuff. I feel like Do it'll, some research, yeah, right? Like just uh, like watch VODs and then, but like I think for them, it'll give them like a lot of like, confidence going to our match. But I feel like for us, it's gonna give us an advantage. Good opinions based on the bracket. I think I'm excited to see how this plays out. I feel like it's pretty balanced on both sides, and I, I'm just really curious to see how the the, the elimination rounds go because we've seen. We, we have Optic, we have LA Gorillas, we have Legion, and we have Surge down there in, in the loser's bracket right away. I really don't know what to expect from some of these teams. We've seen like Gorillas look really good at times. We've seen Paris randomly have matches where they look legit. Uh, Optic Gaming, you know, they the roster change seems to be somewhat promising, but will it be too little too late? I don't know. I I, I feel like the winner's bracket, I have a pretty good idea of, th of how things are going to be playing out. But the loser's bracket, honestly, I have no idea how to predict things. So yeah. uh, is there like one team in specific in the in the losers that you think has a good chance to to make a run? Um, Yeah, for sure. I think there's a, like a, like a, a few like a couple of teams that can make a run in that in that bracket. But yeah. I feel like Seattle could definitely make a, a run. I feel like okay. their players have been grinding like a lot of 10 and stuff. So I feel like I, and they can make a run. Okay, I like to hear that. That's not an answer I was expecting, but very cool. Okay, roster changes. We've seen a couple of them throughout the year. We get the announcement that God RX is replaced by Exceed on Rocker ahead of CDL playoffs. This one really caught me off guard. Um, so you you have all the you spend all this time practicing with a specific player. You're going into the biggest tournament where you think you want to try and rely on those reps as much as possible. And then you get the news that they're making the, the swap out for Exceed going into champs. It caught me off guard, uh, especially earlier on in the year. God RX was one of the best players that we saw on the team performing consistently on LAN. Uh, I think it's just a matter of the team wasn't feeling confident, wasn't feeling comfortable. And just to, to keep it real, God RX had a pretty big dip in performance when the transition to online happened. So it really... I just still really didn't expect it, though. Even though he was playing worse, you would have thought... I, I just figured they were going to keep the roster as it is and, and do what they could going into into champs. How do you feel about this when you saw this news? Did, did you expect it? Are you surprised? Do you think it's weird? What do you think? Um, I was surprised for sure because uh, like Godrex has been the top player in the beginning of the game. Um, obviously, he hasn't played like, his two standards, but I feel like... Yeah. like I, I didn't expect him to be the one that was getting benched. You know? I feel like... Um, I feel like the reason they did that is because of like a pacing issue. Maybe I'm not too sure about that, but like bringing yeah. like bringing Exceed in, it's um, kind of slow. Yeah. yeah, like bringing Exceed in, just like uh, he's a sub player, so I guess they want to be faster. I mean, that's a, that's my opinion. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, we've seen the pacing issue on a couple other teams throughout, and when they've changed made a change to a faster sub player, it, most of the time it's been working. So yeah. maybe they they took examples from other teams and this is what they're trying to go for. But I'm just surprised that. They waited until now, I guess. You, you think you want like a home series or two to to actually have some 
some more reps. Like scrims are just completely different than than tournament gameplay, in my opinion. So the fact that they're just going in with a change like this is like is crazy to see. But yeah, for sure, it's kind of, it's kind of risky, but it could work off, you know. Risky, risky for the biscuit at this at, at this point. We're going into champs. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. Okay, this one, this one was crazy to me. Okay, the third take we have is the mini map exploit, <laughs> the start glitch. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. I saw pros freaking out about it, you know, talking some trash like, oh my God, if you use this, you're a loser, this and that, this and that. My take on the situation is if people were trying to hide it, that's whack. But if everyone knew about it and like, if no one brought it up, that is just like, it's kind of scummy, right? Like, oh man, it just like rubs me the wrong way. You want yeah. to try and make it as, you know, legit and as competitive as possible throughout for, for all the different teams and the fact that certain people may or may not have been abusing this without everyone else knowing and just having this ultimate awareness on the map i the start glitch that's when i went pro back in model warfare 2 <laughs> i started competing you you get taken out you hit start you make your cause and you move on so the fact that certain teams may have had or certain individuals just had probably had so much information and other teams didn't it's like do, do you give them props because they they knew about it? But were they keeping it secret? Uh, do, well, how do you feel about the start glitch? Do you think it's OP? Do you think it gives you too much information? Yeah, what for do you sure. Think? It's OP. It has to get like patched soon. Yeah, like, it has to get soon. It's ridiculous. <laughs> do you think they're gonna fix it for champs? Um, maybe. I don't know. I hope, hopefully, dude. You can quote unquote agree upon it, but there's no way to enforce anything about it. If it doesn't get fixed, you just kind of have to assume that everyone's gonna use it, right? It's yeah. like ah, but it is what it is. You guys are in this situation. You have to try and use every utility possible to get a good placing and hopefully win champs too. But yeah, for sure. Do you quick thoughts on all the GAs and stuff too. Uh, like, with all, do you feel, do you agree with the, like the masses of pros? Do you think they're going a little crazy with it? Where's your head at when it comes to all the GAs? Um, I mean, some like some of the GAs are kind of like like it doesn't make sense, but I mean, I, I don't really care about it. Like, I just play the game, just how it's just like. Do your thing. Yeah, I just do my thing pretty much. Yeah, you're, you seem like one of the people that's like, just give me whatever gun. Like, I'm going to drop a 1.2 <laughs> to 1. Point, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you just make it work, right? I like that. I like that mindset a lot. Okay. So there's Teep's takes. Some crazy stuff leading up uh, to champs. I'm excited to see how the bracket plays out. And uh, let's move on to incoming now. This one's always a fun time. The last couple have been impossibly hard. Let's Let's see. Let's pull up this tab. We got a couple clips that you need to listen to from the CDL broadcast. What you need to do is you're going to hear a bleeped word, and it's your job to try and guess what that word is. Okay, cool. Let's play this first one in three, two, one, go. Now it's Celium. The one versus two. TJ and Slasher up. Slasher spotted, tagged up. Good from Celium, but can't find either kill. I, th Ooh. I think he said Reed. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, think, I think it's Reed. I think you know it. You, you're pretty fast with that yeah, answer. Yeah, because okay. I, I just watched that like recently, so I think it's Reed. <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh in your memory. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so you're going with Reed? Yeah. Let's pull up the answer. And I'm playing this in three, two, Now one. it's Celium. Go. The one versus two. TJ and Slasher up. Slasher spotted, tagged up. Good read from Celium, but can't find either kill. Oh, baby. <laughs> yep. You know, yeah. as soon as you, you got that answer way too yeah. quick, this guy, I think you had the clip open on another tab. You had it ready to go. <laughs> All right. One for one. Yep. Easy peasy. Let's get the second one up now. I'm here. I mean, you're good. Yeah, I'm good. You're good. All right. Three, two, one, go. Point by point, second by second, ultra. Look to close out this map one, but they haven't quite been able to plant the into the back of phase yet. Ooh. Um... I don't know. I, plant the. He said plant. Yeah, plant the. Plant the something. <laughs> um, That's kind of a weird one. I think. I think he said. I, I could have been dagger. I don't know. I'll, I think that's what I. Would, I think that's what I would pick. Yeah. Like what else? Dude, Maven's had some weird <laughs> ones, man. He, he pulls out just the weirdest words in this. You, you, you going with dagger for sure? Yeah, I, I think it'd be dagger. Dagger. Yeah. Okay. All right. Playing that in three, two, one. Point by point, second by second, ultra. Look to close out this map one, but they haven't quite been able to plant the dagger into the back of phase yet. Oh, let's go. two for <laughs> two, dude. Let's go. Two dude. for two, man. I, I think uh, 
I think the production team listened to me, man. They gave you some easier <laughs> ones. Some guys, some guys had it really rough. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, we'll, maybe we'll pull out some random word, dude. Two for two, though. Yep. So, you, so you killed it in the hip fire section. Then we go over to incoming. Bang. Easy two for two. Absolutely amazing. You're a beast. Let's go home, dude. Thank you. Absolute beast. I, I wonder the amount of people on this show that have actually gotten both of them right. It's got to be you and maybe like one or two other people. I think the rest of them either got both wrong or uh, only got one right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so great job on the incoming segment, buddy. Uh, I just want to give you a big old thank you for joining us on the barracks today, buddy. Uh, thank you for breaking down uh, you know, different parts of your guys' gameplay, your individual gameplay, your grind. Uh, the, the the Staying Connected segment was amazing, dude. Thank you so much for, for joining me today, bud. Yeah, for sure, man. It was, it was an honor and pleasure to be in the show, man, for sure. Thank you for having me. Hey, congrats on number one seed and kill it at champs. Thank you, man. See you, buddy.